As it is, electronic electronic health records were never designed for long-term use over the lifetime of a patient. And so as the as life events happen with patients and patients move from place to place of uh, um, use the services of different hospitals, urgent cares, or uh, physician offices. You find out that they uh, leave access to their data, they lose access to their data, because for the most part, those that data is, uh, the electronic health data as it is, is primarily under the control of these, uh, of, um, of the hospitals, the insurance companies, the pharmacies, uh, doctor's offices, they have more control over health data more than patients do. So patients lose access to it. That's one of the big uh, problems that, that uh, using electronic health record systems as they are, as they currently are, as presented. Furthermore, when patients notice maybe notice an error in their electronic health record and initiate attempts to maybe remove the record or correct it, they run into steep hurdles of access where they find out that HIPAA, which is a federal law, allows health providers up to 60 days to respond to uh, inquiries or corrections initiation uh, initiations you know um and because of this delay you find out that a lot of wrong information is left in the patient's data in patients electronic health records um and patients also don't have access or in in a timely fashion when they move from state to state or relocate and they go to a different provider there's significant delay in accessing health records. To make matters worse, patients run into problems like health IT developers and certain third parties charging exorbitant fees to access their health data. So what's now, what's resulting, what this causes is a lack of trust in uh, the entire health system because patients are starting to find out that they don't then there's a significant lack of transparency there's no or um patients feel like they're blocked off blocked out or left out of their own health information their genotype phenotype their um, health and physical allergy information what kind of surgeries they've had in the past and and such and so you find that there's a significant need for a decentralized system that focuses on the patient's um, autonomy and agency. When designing that system, it must empower the patient to have easy and uninhibited access to their medical data. And not just having access, but they should also be able to uh, grant access to that information to who whom they uh, they please or who they uh, they want to, it should not be taken from from patients. Information should not be accessed without their permission. And this goes to the pharmaceutical companies, the hospital companies. You know, in an age or an era where we easily bank online and we uh, conduct high level uh, transactions online, it's far. It's it's you know, it's far too long and it's long overdue for patients to have full access to their health data. This is where the decentralized blockchain comes in. NFTs provide proprietary, uh, um, propri proprietary uh, access to um, digital content on the blockchain, whether that digital content may be art, music, video, um, credentials. In this case, patient data or electronic health records. Uh, NFTs allow us to be able to tokenize this data on the Ethereum blockchain using smart contracts. We can uh, solve the four main problems that uh, that's currently plaguing the uh, electronic health records as it is today. 
Those four main issues are fragmentation, limited access uh, to health records and metadata. Um, the other, one of the other problems include, one of the biggest issues include uh, not enough quantity of data for medical research. And, you know, when it comes to access to data, if it, I would, I imagine that it's a whole lot more easier when patients uh, have agency in releasing that information to whatever research or study or cause that they care about. There'll be more willing patients who, who have agency to their data will be more willing to um, you know, grant access to their data to the cause that they care about. So this is where NFTs, I believe, changes or revolutionizes the entire space. When, uh, uh, when uh, pa patients generate data or health data, we, uh, any company or hospital or you know, healthcare provider that engages the use of NFTs uh, on the Ethereum blockchain in their system, in their he electronic health records, it'll allow for interoperability between the different hospitals and the different facilities because now the, the data now lives on the blockchain and rather than the, uh, the information being fragmented and siloed um, spread out depending on where the patient has traveled to the patient the information is in one location and all the different agencies and uh, counterparties can access that information, including the patient. And the agency or the uh, authentication completely lies on, on, you know, in the control, within the control of the patient as it should be. So this is a space that I'm very excited about that I'm currently studying more and reading into. I find that, uh, you know, in addition to just be uh, using NFTs to tokenize art as it currently is. NFTs can solve a significant problem uh, related to interoperability of use, uh, patient health data uh, access, uh, as well as the quality of the data. And I believe that, you know, the space is gonna change. Com so how will this work? It works with the blockchain technology and the block and blockchain, because of it, the way it, it works, it's an open ledger that's immutable and cannot be altered. And so this naturally provides a level of security and privacy to health data that only allows um, uh, stakeholders to append information but not be able to alter it. They can just add information on there, and but it cannot be the information cannot be altered, and it cannot be accessed by unauthorized um, uh, viewers or people who, because it's on the blockchain, is very private. It's it's I mean no, it's not pub, it's not private. It's public, but it's very well secured. What also protects the information is the way is is because of how. Uh, of, of the concept of nodes in blockchain. So every participating computer is considered in a, that downloads that health uh, blockchain is considered a node. And each one of those nodes have to uh, compute algorithmic um, data in order to generate more health information, which is known as mining. And because it, of how much work or the concept of proof of work that's required to generate that data, it makes it really hard for uh, participants or, or uh, miners to alter the information. All they can do is just generate each block and each one, a copy of each one of those blocks are stored on, the, on each one of the nodes or the, com or, or the computers. So how do you incentivize these miners? Miners can be doctors, it can be hospitals, insurance carriers. They can act as these as the nodes on uh, electronic health record systems on the blockchain, and to access and to incentivize it. Uh, say, for instance, if they're looking for population level data, like 
what is the current um uh i don't know what is the, what 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 is the current what is the current vaccination record for a certain zip code now if it's say for instance an insurance carrier is looking for such a data they would have to be uh they'll, you know they'll have to be incentivized to uh, they'll have to incentivize miners to locate that information on the blockchain and um and as they as they um, as they mine the information in that in the blockchain they reward the patients and the healthcare providers seeking the, the or researchers seeking said information with the health data that's anonymized to uh, satisfy the need that they're looking for the data for. So this is just one aspect of the all the things that can be done with non-fungible token technology on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, I'm still studying it. I'm still trying to get a good grasp, grasp of it. And I'm going to keep sharing it with you guys as I learn. Uh, thank you for watching for the, this video. Please leave a comment in the section and tell me what you would like to hear. Um, and I'll bring it to you next time I, I uh, record this content. Subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content so you're going to keep seeing it. Also like it so that the YouTube algorithm can pick up my video and more of you can see it. Um, it's been a pleasure bringing this content to you. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.